How's it going guys? It's Jake Reed and today I want to give you guys a quick little rundown um, of a franchise mode uh, feature that is going to help you guys out and um, yeah, I, I don't want you guys to neglect when you're playing your franchises because it will mean a whole lot for you and it's going to help you out in the long run. Now, one thing that I do want to say here before I get started in the video, hopefully everybody that's subscribed to the channel is going to watch this video. I want to tell you guys that over the next week, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have internet connection or the ability to upload videos. So I'm going to try to do my best to get videos to you guys over the next week. But don't be surprised if you don't see anything for about a week from me um, until next Saturday. So keep that in mind. Um, but with all that being said, let's jump into it. Training mode here. Uh, the, what is the importance of training in franchise mode in MLB The Show 19? Now... As everybody knows, in every single game, you want to progress your players and get them to higher overalls. And the only way to do that is through training or whatever it might be for any specific game. Uh, and here on MLB, there's a whole separate tab for training um, that a lot of people tend to neglect. A lot of people let it just do its thing on its own and let it do its auto thing. But you want to pay attention to it in certain situations. And I have a couple guys that I think really exemplify what you want to do in terms of training uh, for your uh, players. Now, the reason I say don't neglect these things is because it's going to automatically put people on certain things and it might not be exactly what you want and you want to shape certain players um, to be you know certain things for you so Josh Bell for example here for me specifically I want him to be a power hitter so I'm trying to get his uh, his power up and the way you do that is you make sure they're in the weight room and the only way to do that is to is to manually put them on weight room um, and you can scroll through these and it highlights green up there at the top exactly which ones you know each different training mode affects um, but standard it's just going to have automatic and i don't really know what the case is for automatic i don't know how it determines what exactly to put its automatic training on um, and so that's why i don't trust it as much especially for my mob players and some of my important minor league players i try to focus on these things and check them every now and then and this is nice and easy because the training all happens on its own. It's not like Madden where you have to do a training drill or anything like that. Players progress naturally in MLB, and they regress naturally. So those are things that you want to keep in mind. So looking at Josh Bell, for example, I want to get his power up. So I go in and set him to weight room. And then I'll come back and check it in a while and see if there's another stat that I might want to increase. Um, but another one that's really uh, important to look at is a guy – this is going to be imp extremely important for your guys when they come up from triple a to the mlb uh, a lot of players are going to be lacking in specific areas and you're going to need to increase those one of those guys is kevin newman and if you guys have watched my franchise on the channel here for a while you guys will know that kevin newman doesn't have a lot of power behind his hits even when he gets solid contact there are little bloopers you know, just be on the infield that, that happen to drop down and get him hits. Um, and so that's something that could end up costing you in the long run if you don't focus on his power. So this is a perfect example of a guy where he's got pretty good stats in a lot of other categories. If you look at his contacts, they're pretty good. And he's got pretty good plate vision. He's got pretty good durability and good fielding stats as well as good speed and stealing. So there's nothing there that I particularly want to focus on. But what I do notice is that he's only got 32 power versus right and 35 versus left so that's something that if you increase that um, and let that develop over time he'll be able to get stronger hits and be a more productive player for you um, and what you'll see is if you look at certain players so if I go to Cole Tucker right here they progress naturally on their own if you look at his contact versus left and power versus left you'll see that he has plus three up at the top above those two uh, bar graphs and it'll show you that there's like arrows pointing upwards on those and so what that is, is that's, you know, whatever training he was doing or however he is performing has resulted in those stats progressing for him. And you'll see that that just naturally happens over time. So this is something you want to pay attention to. You want to get those players developing over time. Um, another one here, another good example is Corey Dickerson. I had him on batting cages for a while and his contact went up plus three for both sides. So you, you want to do that. And then there are other things that you can do for like your fielders. If there's a fielder that struggles, for example, like maybe Gregory Polanco doesn't have the best fielding 
scrolling ability, then I can scroll through these and see what exactly I can do. Right now, I've ha I have him in the batting cages to get his contact up, and as you can see, he's got plus two and plus one. So he is progressing in those categories, and you know we're only so many games through the season, so you can imagine how well they will progress by the end of the season. What you will see, though, is if I scroll through here, you can do sprints for speed. You can do the hitting coach se session, which will affect all of those uh, batting things like vision, discipline, and clutch. You can do a bunting drill, which will affect your bunt and drag bunt. You can do stealing, which is or base running drills, which will affect your stealing. You can do the weight room, obviously, or auto. Um, and then you can do physical conditioning, which will affect your durability, and that pertains to how often somebody gets injured or not and then you can do things like the combination toss which will affect your arm strength and arm accuracy and then fielding drills which will affect your fielding and reaction ability now one thing that you want to keep in mind here with uh, these specific categories is that uh, whenever you uh, increase certain things that aren't physical attributes they're going to go and increase uh, somewhat quicker than uh, physical attributes will. So if I'm trying to increase Gregory Polanco's contact or his plate vision, discipline, or clutch, or maybe his fielding ability or reaction, those things will increase much quicker than if I was trying to increase his power or his arm strength or his speed because those are physical abilities. Those things are a lot harder to train. It's easier to train the... the, the um, it's easier to train the intangibles of the game than it is to train physical attributes. And this is something that's common, common among all sports. They say that, you know, you're born physically gifted or not. And so it, that's why it's harder to train those abilities. And that's why MLB The Show 19 is great because it puts in the detail in every single category that you can. Um, and they make it realistic. And that's, that's realistic in these. And so other examples, you don't have to go through all these guys down in the minor leagues and that's not something that i even do a lot of these guys i just leave on you know autos um because they're so low overall like if you looked at a guy like connor usselton here or usselton however you say his name he's got so low uh, overalls in every single category that it doesn't matter what the auto training is going to do for him it's going to improve something and it's going to be beneficial but whenever you're looking at a guy that's an 81 overall there's there's different categories that you can see are clearly lacking compared to others uh, so you may want to focus on those things um, and then the only thing that's a little bit different is when you talk about pitchers pitchers are quite a bit different than uh, any of the fielding players are pitchers have different types of training um, and a lot of the time I put these guys on auto because these things can get a lot more complicated than it does than it would with um, specifically with uh, you know fielders but like for example for my players I'm a type of guy that, that you know, I don't want to give up a lot of home runs, but I do. So I might want to go in and do something that affects my uh, home run per nine, which would be the pitching coach session. Um, and that's something that affects all of those, those intangible pitching categories. Um, that's something that specifically would help me. So this is why I say this is so important because everybody plays differently and you want your players to do different things. You want to build positions certain ways. Um, and whatever suits you the best, you can help that and you can construct a team that way by going in and affecting uh, the training here. And you don't have to do this. You know, you don't have to put in a ton of time to do this. You can just say, OK, for for all my pitchers, I want them to get better in their uh, in their pitching categories here in their intangibles. So I'm just going to go ahead and do pitching coach session for every single one. And, and there's only five starting pitchers. So boom, done. Now I know that all five of my starting pitchers are going to increase in those categories that matter specifically to me. And if something different matters to you, all you have to do is go ahead and put those all in for those players. So don't neglect training in MLB The Show 19 in franchise mode. This will help your players grow pretty quickly. And I'll even show you guys my roster. You guys have seen, if you've paid attention to the channel for a while, where some of these guys started. A lot of these guys have progressed very well. Trevor Williams, for example, started at below an 85, but he's pitched so well and got so many wins, and I've trained him that he's up to an 87 now. And then um, a guy like uh, Joe Musgrove has increased from, uh, I believe it was like a 75 or 76 to up to a 78. 
Um, and then there are a few other guys on the team that have progressed as well. If you look at Felipe Vasquez, he started at, I want to say, a 92 or 93, and he's up to a 95. Elias Diaz actually got a potential upgrade all on his own because he's been playing so well, his potential went up to a B. He was originally a C potential. And that's one of the cool things about this game as well is that it has dynamic potential like that, and it will allow the potentials to increase and decrease based on how a person is playing. So Elias Diaz previously was capped at probably somewhere between a 77 and a 79, but now he's at least capped at somewhere over an 80, which is extremely important. That's extremely helpful. That allows your guys to continue to progress based on their performance. And then Josh Bell started off as a mid-70s player, I want to say 75 or 76, and he's now up to an 81. And um, as you can see with our team, standing-wise, we're only 30 games into a, a very long season, uh, into a 162-game season is what I believe it is. So you can imagine at the end of the season how, how different these things can fluctuate, how good your players can get if you really pay attention to what you want them to do. And you can build players a certain way. So if you, know, you see that some of those guys already have plus three in certain categories, you know, by the time I'm at the end of the season, I could turn some of my pitchers that don't have good home runs per nine into guys that just don't give up home runs. So uh, that's pretty important for the game. You guys don't neglect training. This is why it's important for you, and this is why it'll help you out in the long run. So please pay attention to your training. At least just give it a shot. Go in there and fiddle with it and just see what you can do and maybe improve your players in certain ways to help you out and build your team a certain way. Um, if this video helped you out, please leave a like uh, down below. Please subscribe to the channel for more and leave your comments and feedback down below in the comments section. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. See ya.